For at TV, the world is thinking. As we look at the obesity epidemic we have before us today, and I'm just going to give two examples. There are many others, but for the sake of time so we can get into the discussion with Robert. The fact is, is that we have 9 million children in this country who are overweight or obese. We have unprecedented amount of type 2 diabetes in our children, and we're starting to see hypertension in our children in grammar school. We're taking middle-aged disease and ratcheting it down in a cohort of youngsters who are sedentary, spend far too much time on playstations and not enough on the playground, eat indiscriminately, don't have access to the right foods, grow up in single parent families, latchkey kids, all of the terminology that we use that we understand the social determinants of health, which are so important and extricably intertwined with the health of the nation. You can't fix the health problem until you deal with the socioeconomic determinants of health. They have to be done in tandem. If you do one or the other, it's not going to advance the health significantly of the nation and therefore will not decrease the disease and economic burden that we experience in the nation. So as I look at the childhood obesity epidemic, and it was tough to get traction on that. Let me tell you, my, my, my predecessor, David Satcher, started, and it was tough. I picked up the baton from him when I took over office from David, and we struggled to get traction because at a time when we're at war, at a time when there's so many competing interests, obesity really isn't a sexy thing. But I had to be smart as Surgeon General, and I started learning that it wasn't always about the science, it's how you spin that science. So when you present childhood obesity as an issue of itself from science, sometimes falls on deaf ears. Now it's beginning to resonate. But when I, one day at a press conference, uh, so frustrated because everybody wanted to talk about anthrax and terrorism, and a reporter inadvertently in a room this size filled with reporters said to me, well, Surgeon General, what is the most challenging problem that you're facing? And of course, this is after 9-11 and anthrax. I said, obesity, dead silence. Nobody knew what to ask me. And they said, why? I said, because it's the terror within. That resonated. Got in every paper. Surgeon General says this is a terror and equated it to terrorism. But I says it is because obviously we need to take action against our enemies for bad things that have happened and all of that. I said, but I'm telling you, nine million children today are overweight or obese and they in fact are deteriorating before your eyes. And I said, there are workforce implications here. We're worried now in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, Marines. Where are we going to get our soldiers and sailors in the future? Where will our firemen and policemen come from that are our first responders that take care of us every day? When I'm telling you, this generation could be the unhealthiest in history. And my epidemiologist had told me at the time, Surgeon General, this could be the first generation of children in the United States that lives less than its parents unless we do something about this. So think about that disease burden, which in the next decade is estimated to be at 20%, over $4 trillion spent uh, in our, of gross national product. So think about that, and then think about the workforce implications, and what you start to see is, is as the disease burden with chronic disease mounts, preventable disease, that the legacy we are going to leave our children if we don't break this pattern is unsustainable. Our children will not be able to afford health care. They will be sicker. They will live less. And we'll have huge workforce implications within society. And this is at a time when we're trying to recognize the importance of diversity, cultural competence. We want more leaders to have black and brown skin. We want Native Americans to be up there too. Yet, when we look at the socioeconomic determinants that are inextricably tied to their health status, they drop out of school at 30, 40, 50 percent. So where are you going to get the leaders in the future if you can't get them out of high school? So throwing, throwing dollars, federal, state, or otherwise, to try and save somebody at 18 or 19 or 20 works once in a while. The real key is how do you provide sustainability in the environment that these children grow in, that they get food, that they get nurturing, that they get mentoring, that they have a stable environment, that they're not worried about where they're going to live the next day, then they can learn. Then those children who we lose every day have an opportunity to be successful.